Dang, the worship was so good. Oh my God. Praise God for that. <laughs> it's literally like, how do you get up here and how do you continue? It's like you just want to be dissolved and in it. Um, I love this place. I love what God is doing over here, brick by brick, His presence, the freedom. Yeah, it's amazing, all of it. Um, okay, no announcements, no nothing. I'm getting into this. <laughs> I'm trying to get sobered up here. <laughs> um, okay, so very interesting as, as you know, as... Brick by brick, everything God is doing, I love how He's aligning everything. He's putting hunger and fire into teens, into our youth, burning for God, literally just burning for God. And I want to encourage you guys, um, you know, one of the things that I was meditating on and thinking, just something that hit me kind of over the week, is, um, you know, after people have been with God for a minute, it's like their fire die die out, right? Where they're kind of like neutral or cold to everything. But it's on us to keep that fire burning. It's on us to truly, like in the, as individuals, not our, only as a body of Christ, but as an individual, to keep wood, like feeding that fire pit that's on the inside of us, the spirit. Keeping that firewood going, keeping those flames going, you know, because it's important. That fire is what's contagious that's on our life. I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to everybody because it works the same. Pursuing God after a decade, two decades, three decades, you know, it's like you kind of see a lot of things and you kind of get dull and used to a lot of stuff, you know. But God, He's fresh and He's new every day. He is. It's up to us to find Him in, in the place that He's at. My topic today that I want to talk about, the title that I named it is Find Your Place. The title for it I'm going to be speaking out of two scriptures Ezekiel 22 30 and Genesis 18 through 16 so what God has put on my heart this week is is really you know I was driving in in Kent how many of you guys noticed what's happening on our streets Kent and Auburn areas it's you know every single time when I drive on them it breaks my heart there are so many homeless people that start being in our neighborhoods. There are so many drug addicts that are in our neighborhoods. And I understand that the God that lives on me, the God that rests on this place, he's big and he's real. And I really feel like there needs to, I don't know how to put it into words, but the topic that I'm going to be talking about is uh, out of Ezekiel 22:30, and it talks about standing the gap, right? Ezekiel talks about stand in the gap. And so when it comes to church, we need to stand in the gap between heaven and earth for heaven to manifest. Um, let's read, let's read Ezekiel 22:30. Uh, So when it comes to Israel, just kind of context beforehand, what was happening. When it comes to Israel, Israel is just lost. Everything that they know they're not doing, they're just completely living a life that is godless. And Ezekiel comes in. He just starts declaring and prophesying God's word. Ezekiel 30, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guard the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the wall. So I would have, so I would, wouldn't have to destroy the land, but I found nowhere, no one. So how many of you guys know that God is the God of solutions? God, our God is the God of answers. This world right now with all the confusion that is happening in it, it needs solutions, it needs answers. People take it into their own minds and try to figure out things on their own. It doesn't work like that. That's why God created this life for us and he created this game that we can be dependent and trust him and we can walk literally under his authority, all of us. And so when it comes to us right now, I feel like when it comes to Transformation Center, God, like the anointing that is on this place is truly to raise up strong leaders, 
people that are weak-minded usually don't stick around here people that are truly pure-hearted and strong they stick around here and they like what God does with them is literally transform hearts and lives I'm talking about myself and I know countless of people with the same testimony and the same story so this being said it's like people don't people here don't discern the seasons when when you are a baby you need you need somebody to hold your hand right but after a time when you get mature when you grow up God literally wants you to take your position and take your place to cover the gap God always speaks when you grow up and when you mature he always points out different traumas pains he points out different problems he's talking to you he's talking to you that you are that solution and you are the answer for the issue or problem that's around you so people right now they are struggling and a lot of times when I was prepping for this when I was thinking about this you know one of the biggest I guess I don't know problems but one of the highlights that I kind of was getting out of this was the past two three decades the preachers that have been preaching was a lot of prosperity gospel and now we're literally harvesting the fruit of it that this world and our nation is suffering literally in confusion and all kinds of stuff but right here like God speaks clearly through Ezekiel there was nobody to stand in the gap God wants us to intercede and these gaps for us as a body of Christ it looks different for sometimes you know for for a, for a family it might be standing the gap to save your marriage sometimes it's to save your standing in a gap praying and interceding to save your kids like these gaps they're everywhere like for me the gap that God called me to be in this season in this place right now is to truly intercede a generational gap seeing uh, Gen Z's and Millennials to truly connect and impart what's on this house what God has imparted as an inheritance on this house to travel from now on into the next generations right because we want to build brick by brick every generation we don't want the enemy to steal enemy is you know kill steal and destroy that's his purpose mission that's what that's who he is that's his nature he looks for these gaps to come into these gaps as open doors and kill and like literally kill steal and destroy kill your freedom still you steal your time everything he can get his hands on he takes it <laughs> he's greedy like that so this being said it's like I'm fired up for this because I know what God is doing like the pressures that I have to experience you know like with being up here and and knowing where God is taking us and stuff like Tommy was saying the price is real but the price is worth it because I understand that God is in this time right now he's going to be releasing answers and solutions for 2024 for 2025 for such a time as this where we as a church haven't every generation has their own issues right every generation needs to work on different things for our generation is literally bringing God back bringing truth back into churches into our country into our culture it's bringing purity back it's it's the basics man like literally the basics it's um I feel like when it comes to thick knowledge that's not what it's about because everybody has it but the walking the walk people don't do it they have a bunch of stuff in their head but walking the walk is where it's at so to highlight one of the things from Ezekiel 22 30 is a righteous person God is looking so when he was looking to rebuild these walls to guard the land he's looking for righteous people I love Andre's last topic purity of heart principles morality things like that it's like righteous person a person who is morally right before God who has fear of the Lord in in his heart and who trusts God with everything in his heart like all of the rooms of your life you rely on God that he sustains you that he leads you that he guides you that he's always with you no matter what this house we stand for we have high standards here and literally as being the bridge between generations you know I want to carry on those standards but also I want to build on those standards because that will require the big God that is on our life 
Does that make sense? It's not going to require your own abilities, your own giftings, your own experience, skills. That's going to require the big God that is on our life, the, the God of the Bible. So when it comes to, you know, my word today, I really feel like Holy Spirit is throwing a challenge to you guys. We are mature here. We are strong here as a, as a body, as a house. We have a lot. We have amazing people. That's one of the reasons I love this house. The people are so gifted, so anointed, so mature, so pure inside out. Different generations, literally, of all generations. Our youth is just so amazing. But God right now, He's looking for willing hearts. He's willing, He's looking for willing hearts because when it comes to Ezekiel 22, this was what's wrong with this place, with this, with this picture. God was looking for a person. He couldn't find a person. You know why he couldn't find a person? Because there wasn't a willing heart. I doubt that there weren't righteous people back then. There were people that kind of lived a pure life and, you know, knew a little bit of Jewish laws and this and that. But he couldn't find a willing heart. A willing heart that will get on that altar and it will like you will stay on that altar whatever that looks like covering the gap covering the gap it's like i love how even the whole renewing of our friday prayers happening right now you know it's like that's what god is doing with us one of the most beautiful things that i experience is that when we're together as a body we're together in prayer and worship and when we connect in the spirit together it's like you look at your brother and sister differently when you come out of that place. When you just connect it in the presence of God, it's so special. It's like it has no words. If you haven't experienced that, like there is no words to that. When you can unite in a spirit together, like a body, it's the most precious things. And we, we have that. We're, we're doing that. We just literally did that 10 minutes ago. It's insane. But God is looking for people to unite together and cover the gaps because every single person doesn't matter the calling the big the small there is always something that God's going to be pointing out to you and he's always going to be putting that on your heart a lot of people that like travel throughout the years through this house they get to a certain point they reach their maturity levels and then their seasons change and they don't know what to do meaning that like they stop receiving they stop getting fed from the word they stop receiving anything from this church and then they start complaining like what's wrong with me this place has no anointing this place this and that you know start talking and talking smack and, and being so negative and stuff it's like yo can't you realize that you got matured like you are mature you are ready to literally partner up with god find what god is calling you to and you should start pouring into other people whatever that looks like and like that's how simple it is god leads us from different seasons to different seasons you know there's nothing wrong with this place this place is amazing but you have to really discern what god is doing with you individually and where god is taking you personally right now in a moment because it starts with individuals and then it starts corporately with us here so standing in a gap you know i feel like the past few years and months we've been really pushing on intimacy and i feel like andre's topic out of this pulpit has been intimacy connection with god for all of this like bashing religion like just cutting it left and right you know and just pointing all the arrows to jesus how important that intimacy with him is and connection is when it comes to covering the the gap or standing in the gap where god is calling us to is literally it starts with intimacy when you have your intimacy figured out like you walk with god you hear his voice very clearly you obey him you know how to trust him your heart is pure before him right you're clear of sin and all of that stuff that is not needed then comes intercession and in his presence in prayer and intercession that's where you tap into his heart how i mean that is that you start feeling what he's feeling his heart's desires start becoming your heart's desires his pain starts becoming your pain and so that's what true unity with jesus looks like and out of that place that's where the body of christ unity flows I think I'm kind of talking to mature people and I know I, I know you guys know what I'm talking about because this is definitely you know 
not for for weak minded and for uh, people that people that haven't been through the process and haven't paid paid the price and know what it looks like to stay on that altar burning, <laughs> smelling like a chicken. Yeah. So um, you know. Intercession, a quick definition of what intercession looks like. Intercession is mediating in a dispute. So in other words, there is a problem. God opened up your eyes to see a problem, right? Society, family, friendship, a lost friend that you have. There's a problem. And so you are disputing. You are bringing this issue to God. A lot of times without God, we can't even see these problems. Like spiritual problems. I'm not talking about physical because it all starts with, with spiritual bringing to God in prayer and petition on either on behalf of society a friend a family you're bringing this to God so you start how many of you guys ever experienced the spirit of intercession like how many of you guys ever tapped into the heart of God where you're like, wow, what was that? It's like, it just takes over you. You start looking from his eyes. You start feeling and experiencing his presence and, and just like completely different dimension and a completely different shift. And so this is what I'm talking about. When it comes to intercession, this is for mature people. When you, and again, I'm going to give room to Holy Spirit to speak to you guys individually because I know there are people in this, in this house who hear me now who's going to listen to me later that God is speaking to you. And a lot of times what, you know, what I kind of encounter when it comes to this is people are afraid to step out. People know that they are called for God's glory, but they are afraid to step out for whatever reason, thinking you're not ready, thinking, you know, it's not time yet or whatever. If God is literally highlighting, if he's leading you right now, start with the opportunity that he has right in front of you because a lot of times these little opportunities and these open doors are really right there you just got to ask him what does it look like where is my place how can i stand in the gap and start releasing your glory so intimacy again when i when i talk about standing in a gap I really want to like do a disclosure and kind of highlight this multiple different times. You have to walk in the intimacy with Jesus because when you're going to start conquering land and moving forward and trying to stand in the gap of other person's salvation or really manifesting God's will, God's presence and glory, things are going to start coming at you. If like, let's say you have an unsaved friend and, and you're, really pressing in and, and asking that they get saved, that they get to know Jesus, that their lives get changed and transformed. Do you think the enemy is going to like that? He's not. Things are going to come at you and they're going to attack. And a lot of times you guys know what it looks like. Mind tricks, pressures, all kinds of different stuff. So intimacy for this is like literally step number one. A lot of, you know, Christians, they, they talk the talk, but they don't walk in this. And we need this so badly because as Tommy was saying, it comes from the overflow. It doesn't come out of your own striving and gifting. And this is the time that we are in right now, the season that God is leading us. It's all that like true sonships that God is bringing up right now. It's going to be out of the overflow. That's what the true sonship is going to be. I feel like the era of giftings and experiences and all that is kind of, it's literally, it's in the back. Now we're, 100% yielded to him and we just become vessels and flowing and releasing kingdom of heaven. So let's read Abraham. Let's read uh, Genesis 18, 16 through 33. I just kind of want to give... <laughs> A biblical clear example of what literally throughout Old Testament New Testament what it looked like and standing the gap what it really looked like and I love this is probably one of my favorite verses in a Bible when it comes to this this picture that we're gonna read right now so Genesis 18 17 it's um, Abraham intercedes for Sodom this is what we're gonna get into right now 
This is God talking. This is so beautiful. When you're intimate with God, God shares his secrets with you. And this is amazing. It's like we think about this big God that is like sitting on this throne, right? That's like so far up there. Who knows like where he's at? He built all this big world and all these people and everything like it's it doesn't fit your head it doesn't fit your mind right yet God is striving to be intimate and close with us it is so mind-boggling how beautiful that is like the, your creator always wants to be with you so this is God talking should I hide my plan from Abraham the Lord asked for Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation and all the nations on the earth will be blessed through him i have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the lord by doing what is right and just then i will do for abraham all that i have promised so the lord told abraham i have heard a great outcry from sodom and gomorrah because their sin is so fragrant this is bad. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. The other man turned and headed towards Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. Abraham approached them and said, will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find 50 righteous people living in their city will you sweep it away and not spare it for the sake for their sakes surely you will you surely you wouldn't do such a thing destroying the righteous along with the wicked why you would be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same surely you wouldn't do that this is crazy this is a man talking to a god <laughs> <laughs> this is intense. This is like us as sons. We can do the same thing. Surely you wouldn't do the same. You would not judge all the earth. Do what is right. Earth do what is right. And the Lord replied, if I find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sakes. I'm not going to go through the whole story. Um, I think you guys know what it looks like. It, you know, goes from 50 to like, what, 30 to 10. So the picture that I'm trying to draw here is that Abraham, God shares his heart with Abraham, right? Abraham picks up and he starts interceding. This is literally spiritually what the blueprint looks like. It's not about selfishness, what it's all about me. I want to get more. I want to get rich. I want to get this and that. It's really, how do you see what God is doing? Loving on your God to such a, like intimacy, right? First commandment, love your God with all your heart, soul, spirit, with everything. And this is where you get in a deep intimacy with God, where you start seeing things, where he starts revealing to you secrets, the things that are hidden. When you see that, that's when you turn around and you're gonna know how to love on your neighbor, how to truly serve others, and how to have the solutions and how to step into your anointing and your calling that is on your life and start serving. This is so beautiful when you start thinking about it. For God, this process is very natural. The only problem in this process that a lot of people always get off from their sacrificial altar <laughs> they just get off <laughs> they stop carrying the cross they 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 stop being in close intimate relationship with God and that's where the whole disconnect happens of your beautiful journey on this earth with God what it was meant to be when you literally look through the whole Bible Joseph's story he stood in the gap Esther's story she stood in the gap saved and brought the whole like salvation of Israel and, and God's people. Daniel pleading and interceding and seeking God's mercy. Probably my favorite is Jesus, our King. He stood in the gap. I mean, the whole story is about him. Like Tommy said, you know, from the beginning, he was called forth and prophesied into. He stood in the gap between heaven and earth, between father and sin and us, and he literally made the way. He opened up the door 
and this is so powerful when you really start thinking about this and understanding we can walk in spiritual freedom because Jesus's blood it intercedes for us every single day still it is so good like we have an intercessor we have the one that closed this gap the enemy has no access that's it like now it's on us to find where God is hard for us to truly get in a place where we are protected that's intimacy that's being with him and being in his presence and and and, and truly under the shadow of his wing and then just literally releasing releasing what's on your life how many of you guys have, know that you are a treasury box there is so much stuff on every life like a lot the stuff that comes out of my life I'm like is it like when is it gonna dry out and where is it gonna stop it's just like God like literally he already put all of that in your seed when he created you all of you guys are on the same page it's being in action moving forward when all of that starts coming out of you and you start seeing kingdom of heaven manifesting it's like oh my god Jesus his life his death his resurrection made it all possible for us can you guys imagine if we were to live in the Old Testament right now we we'll have to like sacrifice all the sheep and worry about how much sacrifices we will have to do for all our screw-ups you know we don't even think about these things because we're so far away from that you know but it is so good because I want to recognize that I want to highlight that because he is worthy like we always say saying and talk about if we, he is truly genuinely worthy because now we have the opportunity to go through his process and maturing and purifying our hearts right and truly stepping into the calling and bringing heaven on earth like bringing heaven on earth in our in our communities into our families into everything that God has put on our life every great man in the Bible if we analyze had one gap or another that they covered they saw like all the prophets right if you guys really dig into Old Testament prophets the things that God told them to do they did it they released God's word when like everybody was literally against them they were being mocked persecuted like Elijah like sheesh the stuff they had to encounter they literally they were on the altar completely sacrificed like their life was a sacrifice but they covered the gap they interceded for people they interceded for heaven to come on this earth they literally hold the ground so when you I don't know if you guys realize that but when you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior when you signed up for a life to live with him and under him under his authority you guys signed up for a whole thing it ain't no 5%. It ain't only about salvation, right? You can't just pick and choose. You signed up for the whole gospel. The whole gospel comes with a whole benefit package. <laughs> you know, it comes with a whole package. It comes with seeing and walking in God's glory, but it also comes with persecution, all the pressures, all the trials, all the fires that, that are going to do amazing things to your heart. The whole package is going to make a true son of you and a true daughter out of you yeah it's so good so I want to encourage today I want to challenge and I want to encourage people that know that this is the time and the season for you to step out and truly start walking into what God has put on your heart and I know there's quite a bit because I, I talk with with young people I talk with different generations you know don't be afraid it's all worth it it is all worth it the price sometimes is going to be crazy but that's that's where we come together in unity that's where we minister to each other where we love on each other where we pray for each other where we support each other we get up and we keep on walking and keep on going again it's a body it's genuinely a pressure like precious time from for us to step into because it's all about the body it's not going to be individual people 
it's going to be a whole body moving forward and a whole generation. And it is so exciting and so beautiful just to know that, understand that, see that, and here soon to start walking into that and walking in that. One of the things when it comes to standing in a gap, one of your probably biggest enemies, probably even bigger than Satan himself, is going to be comfort. Church loves their comfort, you guys. Oh my God. Like, are you guys know, like, anybody relate to what I'm saying? Thank you. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Uh huh. Okay, good. Um, it's an enemy, you guys. When it comes to comfort, it's an enemy for what God has prepared for you for your life and what He wants to release to you. Like, when you accept this whole package deal with Jesus Christ being in you and on you, that means like comfort, you're walking by faith, not by sight. What is comfort? When you really start thinking about it, it's your worst enemy. So if you start smelling comfort on your life, oh, start interceding for yourself and start getting out of it. Start running away like, Lord, help. But like do some extreme stuff, like literally that will really shake you up. Comfort, we live in a society that is all, it's all about comfort, anywhere you look at. Comfort, food, jobs, tell, I mean, you name it, everything is wrapped with comfort. When it, <laughs> exactly, literally sitting, <laughs> sitting seats and everything is about comfort. Cars, I mean, everything is in your life is about comfort. I really want to like highlight and stress this because this is like one of those OMG, you know, if you guys want some true gospel shining through your life, your like comfort got to be out the window, man. Like if some people still believe in the five year plan thing, you know, that's part of comfort, man. <laughs> you ain't going to have no five year plan. It's like you obey God and you trust him and you walk, step in and step out following him. It's, oh my goodness, it's so simple, but I want to hammer this and I want to get this into us that this becomes real. Like if, if God says go, preaching the gospel in the middle of the store where everybody's looking or whatever, okay, we're doing it, you know. Whatever he looks, whatever his command us to us, is to us on daily basis, we don't even think twice. We just do it. It's, I, I feel like when it comes to Gen Z world, it's probably going to be easier. For millennials, it's a little bit more challenging already. But for, for older generation, it's like, oh, mama. You know, it's going, to be, it's going to be a stretch. But you guys, on the other side, there is always a good reward. When you step out and obey God, there is always a good testimony and a gift wrapped on the other side. He knows what he says to us, what he says to step out and like trust him. The whole package deal when you signed up for Jesus, I don't know if anybody ever told you this, but this is not going to be easy. <laughs> Literally following God is not easy, but we're not after easy. We're after what's going to be maybe hard and challenging in the beginning because we want to be satisfied in the long term and we really want to receive the fruits of heaven. We, we, we don't like, I don't want, I don't want the satisfaction in a moment. It's going to fade away in like two days where you're going to come to eternity and you're going to see the fruits that were manifested through your life and you're going to rejoice like for eternity because of that. Oh my God, that is just so good and so powerful. It's not. It really is not about comfort and it's not about our lives. The deeper you go into intimacy with Him, the more you lose of yourself. The more and more you lose of yourself. It's like, Lord... What am I doing today? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that kind of losing of yourself. It's like you don't plan out your stuff. You just follow his voice and what he's telling you. So fighting the good fight. Taking a step back to kind of simplifying because I got this question this week. So when are you ready to start stepping out and start interceding and start covering these gaps and start truly... being obedient and sensitive to God's will and, and manifesting it, right? Intimacy number one. If you guys haven't heard Andre's last preaching on second service, listen to it because all those check marks have to be check, uh, checked off. 
pure heart. Your heart got to be pure, so check it. Make sure Jesus is there <laughs> and only him. <laughs> character. Make sure your character is yielded to Jesus because this is a big one. A lot of times people just have this all kinds of out of whack, you know. You have to be a person of principle, honor, integrity, because this is when God's presence rests on you. You're going to be able to move forward. You're going to be able to stand because seriously, some of the pressures that come like my way, I can't even imagine what Andre throughout the years experience, you know, that stuff is real. Like the pressures and the attacks and the stuff like spiritually that comes and opposes you. You want to give up, man. You want to run the other way. It's like, Lord, help. How is this even possible to overcome some of these things, you know? But because he paid the price, he made that cross real. All of it is possible. Amen. You don't question how you do it. You just do it. You know, you just do it. So the thing is with moving in glory and in God's presence, your heart will be tested. You want to be spanking clean on the inside of you. Like, make sure you guys, I really want to bring awareness of that. Sin is not there. If you guys have traumas you haven't dealt with, deal with them. Pains, if it's your own, like deal with it. Let Holy Spirit into those rooms of your heart. They are whole and restored. Like you're completely like healed. Because that's how you're going to be able to flow and release what God has on your life. I'm excited. I'm already excited what God is doing with, uh, with our teens. Oh my God, like you guys have been stepping in like a uh, kids camp. Oh, it's so good. Thank you whoever was serving you guys. That was beautiful. Literally our kids are just getting wrecked. I mean, to see that to me as having, you know, a pop's heart, I was looking, I was just undone. I'm like, that's only God. Only God can touch kids on such deep level. And those seeds, they're there for eternity with them. Like they can't run away with, like, from that ever. God is always going to have that door and that access to speak into their life. They're always going to be familiar with his presence. That's worth the price, y'all. Like everybody who served, thank you, seriously. I, I, as a leader, I know how hard it is and how, you know, you have to get restored and this and that from it. But all of it is so worth it. All of it is worth it. Probably one of the reasons, you know, for, for this topic is like, I don't know why, but after the, the, the death of my dad, um, a big thing that happened to me when uh, Mark passed away, uh, uh, a guy here, uh, probably most people don't know, about a decade ago he passed away. He was involved in a very, you know, hard accident. I was close with him. Then after, you know, he was taken uh, from us, it's like it really impacted me in a, in a deep way, but I also made that impact me in a very healthy and a good way, where I am very aware of my time on this earth. I really want to be super productive, super sensitive on how I spend my time. And I really want to do my best to overcome. Whatever it looks like, whatever hits you sometimes, you get up, you surrender to God, like heal me, restore me, clean me, get me back on the path that is right. It's like there is no time to waste. Literally a blink of an eye, this, line, this time is over. It's like this life goes by quick. So if you have Jesus in your life, in your heart, and you are like fired up and fiery on the inside and you hear his voice clear, just pursue him. Just be with him and pursue him. One of the things, you know, Paul in a New Testament in Romans 15, 30, he writes and this is, you know, I feel like we as a youth, we already walk in this, but I really want to walk closer and more intentional in this. Let me read uh, Romans 15, 30. Paul understood the power of standing in a gap and the power of prayer and intercession. This is what he said to his friends in Rome. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying for God for me. 
I feel like when it comes to these next steps, God is uniting us together in the spirit. We talked a lot about unity. We've been releasing it this year. But this is what it looks like. When you guys are picking something up in the spirit, when you're in prayer, that your brother or your sister needs help and support, be very aware of it and conscious of it. I had multiple people, you know, come up to me the last probably two, three weeks. They're like, dude, I couldn't stop thinking about you the last week. What is happening? I'm like, dude, I need prayer like badly, man. Like if he's putting like me on your heart, you better like start interceding and start, you know, releasing God's favor and, and goodness and glory my way and all of that stuff because I need it. So it's like, it's God doing it. It's not us doing it. God wants us to unite us in the spirit, not only for Sunday for this. He wants to unite us in the spirit Monday through Sunday. Like all the time that we're together as a body. Whatever that looks like. Physical help, support. Spiritual help, support. Because if we're going to come into this new place that God is leading us, like I got some uh, feedback from um, the conference that's taking place right now, and the finding the unity that's over there, the presence that's over there and stuff like that. We are literally, for a Northwest, we're the same thing. We're literally the same thing. We're just missing a couple of ingredients that we're going to establish and we're going to move forward. This is a very special place here. It's worth it. It's worth it, like, to be vulnerable, to step out, to surrender to God, to pursue, to leave yesterday. Because God is always fresh in a moment. He's not. Like yesterday's manna, it's gone. Like it's faded away. Don't operate out of yesterday. It's today. That's what counts. But my biggest, again, heart, and it's super weird. I was driving in Kent the other week, and I'm looking at these, you know, this new drug that came out, and you see these people standing for hours, and you're like, I, I started crying. I'm like, what is that? That's my streets. I never saw, I was growing up on these streets. I never saw this before. These people are suffering. Like hell has taken over these, these places, these lives, these souls, these hearts. And I really want to like, as a leader here, I want to establish this place that when we go out there, when we start bringing these people here, that they experience heaven, that their lives get transformed. Because our God is real. Our God is real, like He transformed my life. I know what He's going to do out there. And so it's really, it's not about us. It's really not about us. This life is not about us. If you guys matured and you guys know already, it's not about us. It's about surrendering your life to Him and serving others, man. That's, that's exactly how, how, what it looks like. When we started is, Larry ain't here, huh? Larry and Masha. I wanted to give them a shout out because um, when we started our youth in our cozy little green room that they pimped out for us, it's so, it's so good. Um, one of the things, you know, I, in the moment I didn't understand how these things worked or whatever, you know, how, how do you start, I don't know, a live group in a, in a ministry or like, we were like, just following the voice of God. Okay, let's go. <laughs> this is what God is doing. This is what we're doing. So when we were over there, you know, I was super hungry. Every single time, every week, I would be there consistently. Hour or two beforehand, making the way. Praying, releasing God's presence. I'm like, you have put this youth on my heart. You have called me for this. I want your presence. Because without your presence, I can't do none of it. Like... You know, it's like, I'm a, I'm a human being. What can you do? The crazy thing is some of the testimonies I would like hear and, and get, it's like as soon as people or youth would walk into that green room, the ones that either weren't there or like more sensitive or whatever, that will literally get hit with the presence of God. It's like as soon as they would get like in there, presence of God would hit them. I'm like, oh my God, like it's from the beginning God was was there he was moving and now we're seeing more and more of their fruit because now we have a next generation of soldiers that is literally ready and equipped and ready to hear his voice and command to go and, and, and do his will you know and it's the pressures and the attacks I was getting you know in those times and those prayers they were real now it's a little bit next level you know but I understand that God that is on this house, God is on, that is on my life, it's worth it.
you know what I mean? It's worth it. Whatever it looks like in every season, on any level, being in the moment, it doesn't always have to make sense. He's the one writing your story. If your life is yielded to him, trust him. He's the one with the pen writing your story. It's like we read all these stories in the Bible, right? About Abraham, about uh, Jacob, about how we got here. They didn't know when they were in the moment what was happening. <laughs> Abraham was probably, after God gave him the, the, the promise about the stars and the generations and stuff, I'm sure Abraham came like five years later. He's like, man, that was your promise, God? I ain't seen none of it, you know? It's like living in the moment you don't know. Until he reveals and opens and all the puzzles start coming together and you start seeing it, Trusting is the only thing we have as Christians, obedient and trusting, literally. And so when it comes to covering the gap, it's our responsibility as a Christian. It's a hard responsibility, but it is our responsibility. When God is putting on your heart to intercede for your kids or your friend or your community, your boss or, or, or people at your school, just listen to him and obey. Now, God is literally, it's so beautiful. God is establishing, and I started picking this up last year. God is establishing um, in, the, in the youth ministry, he's establishing an intercession, intercession team. And I'm like, praise God, because I know when I see that, I know God is expanding us. I know God is going to be literally giving us more land because it all starts with this. Standing in the gap, interceding, releasing kingdom, and seeing where God is leading you. So I'm excited because I know this stuff is real. So just to summarize everything, you know, that I was releasing and what I really want out of this topic to kind of, you know, be left and deposited into you guys' hearts and for this, for this week is incline and listen. Incline your heart. You know how Bible always talks about they have ears, but they can't hear. They have eyes, but they can't see. Well, because in intimacy, you really pick these things up. You pick up in the spirit what he's doing. So listen to where God is taking your heart and what he's putting in your heart right now. What are your next steps? God, throughout the whole time frame, he's always been looking for people. People with obedient hearts, people with yielded hearts, people that are going to become kingdom minded and they're going to release his glory on this earth. He's still looking for those people. The only disconnect is the willing hearts. So for us, it's like, Lord, I'm in this boat. My heart is still willing. Just help. <laughs> Whatever this looks like, just take me the right direction, just lead me, make sure this boat is going in the right direction, you know? It's like, you're in a boat, I know. You guys know exactly what I mean. So, kingdom-minded, I love this. Kingdom-minded men and women, they are beyond what they see physical. They are spiritual people. They see between the lines what God is doing. And they're calling that forth and they're standing on His Word, on His promises. The reason for this lesson, because I really feel like God in this time frame, he wants to bring a lot of kingdom of heaven on this earth. You know, all when we f see with our physical eyes, all we see is darkness in a sense crawling everywhere. To me, that's a, that's an opportunity and it's a call to truly unite together, to stand the gaps that we need to, because it, it goes like this. This is how God made it. Individual, when you got intimacy, then it goes back to your, like, next step is your family. If your family is solid and protected and with the Lord, then it goes to your community. So if you got the first two figured out, community is the next one. God, where are you taking me? Who can I be an example to? Who can I bring into your kingdom, into your presence? If your family is not figured out, that's your gap. That's your gap. Like, Lord, save my sister, save my brother. Like, restore my family, whatever that looks like. That everybody is believing, everybody lives in your, in your presence and under your authority and power. Like, when I talk about gaps and when God is talking about gaps, that's what he means. 
an enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but for us, it's, it's a matter of identifying these gaps and closing the door to the enemy, that the flow of heaven is fully in our lives, in everything that we do and who we are. He wants, I really keep on feeling a heaven on earth, and it's possible. The blood has made it all possible in the cross. Yeah. When it comes to problems and solutions, all successful people know the blessing that comes out of it. When you see pain, when you see a problem, when you see brokenness, our flesh or weak mind a lot of times wants to run away from it. But the blessing and the glory is exactly in that. So when God is pointing that out, that's where you go. You know, the craziest things that this this year this has been manifesting a lot in me when i see pain rejection on people when i see all the like hellish stuff right people that are under oppression of of the darkness or whatever as soon as i come out and start praying for them oh the most beautiful thing starts happening you start shifting atmosphere over these people they this thing starts coming off of them and lifting off of them this peace and presence start forming over them and they're just standing there shocked like what just happened you know like that's jesus that's holy spirit for you you know it's real but that's how you identify you don't wait for God to come down from heaven and be like, Lord, go pray for that person. It's like you see a person that needs ministry and help, you go. This is like already part of your responsibility as a Christian, you know? It's like, dude, yes. <laughs> Loving on people, that's what it's all about. Amen. Yeah. You know, my bridge and my gap that's been throughout all these years, almost a decade, coming on a decade, you know, in ministry, discovering how this world looks like, you know, mm, my step was literally by faith, moving and following the voice of God. I'm like, I gave my life to him. I'm going to follow you, whatever it looks like. My heart was always to bridge that presence and that inheritance and God's wisdom and like everything to Gen Z and then generations afterwards. And we see that. We see the blessing of how these things work. Bridging the gap and standing on God's heart's desire. Because I picked up on his heart desire in that intimate place. I knew what he was doing. I knew he wanted to prosper this place. He wanted to bless this place. And he wanted to literally keep this place in the Northwest. Because there is so much good that is done through here. And so I opened up a door for him. And he's been doing such amazing testimonies way beyond my life. I, I know that and I see that. And now it's way out of my control. <laughs> you know, it's just, that's what it looks like. For like, if I was, I'm not saying I am. I still have a lot of work. If I was to go to be with Jesus today, I feel like my life has been already worth living. Just from what I already lived. It's literally been already worth living. And that's what happens when you yield your life to him, when you live a life with him. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. It's really been a pleasure to cover this gap. But also, it's like the reason why I was able to do that. Yes, I was an answer to uh, Andre's and Sveta's prayers because they prayed a lot for this. But I received that heart's desire from Jesus. Literally, I saw that that, that was his heartache. And he imparted that onto my life. When you pick that up from him, no matter the trial, no matter the hardship, no matter the pressures, no matter what the journey is going to look like, you're going to be able to do it. You're going to be able to overcome that and keep on moving forward. So the gaps, I want to highlight them again because they're different. Generational gaps, family gaps, society gaps, friendship gaps. Like you guys have intimate, close, secular uh, friends, people, co-workers. That you love these people during your life, but they don't have Jesus in their hearts. God wants you to stand in the gap and intercede for them. And when he opens up the door, that you release God into their hearts and into their lives. 
like for, for you know, I, 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 I work with secular people and every opportunity I get, I talk about Jesus. And I always, you know, look for opportunities that their heart are, are, are open and ready to receive. I was um, one of the company that, that, I, uh, that I work with, um, the company that gives me quite a bit of the jobs that, that I do and stuff. Um, my, my boy over there, he, he, we always see each other too. He does electrical, I do the managing and stuff. But, you know, as I was talking to this lead guy, the, the boss guy, it's like, we start talking and I'm like, dude, do you know that Jesus is the answer? And he's like, this was never, I grew up always on the news watching only the negative stuff about Christians and about church. Like for him, it's like he doesn't have a good blueprint that Jesus is, is a thing. He's real. It's not what the screw up of a church and you know what I'm saying? All the negative propaganda and all of that that has been like portrayed to society. I'm like, no, he's, he's like, he lives in your heart. You know, and I had this thick, awesome conversation, you know, and he's like, I'm not ready for that. And I'm like when you are like I'll be here and God will be there you know it's like people always look for all kinds of different solutions but I can totally see that God never had uh, people never had the opportunity to meet God face to face and them personally so when you pray for people in church outside of church you don't know how a small little prayer can impact their life sometimes I am very surprised I'm like I just feel like praying for a person. I pray for them. They just get wrecked, undone completely. I'm like, that was just a prayer. And they're like just laid out experiencing the presence of God, you know? And like some of those prayers, they change their lives. So like when Holy Spirit is speaking to you, get your eyes off of yourself and your selfishness and just put your face and gaze on Him and go do what He says. Because it's going to be powerful on the other side. The last statement I kind of want to end this with is that I really feel this intensely. God is raising up intercessors, people that are going to stand in these gaps, but also worship. Worship is what's going to lead this whole thing right now. And me as a leader, I'm going to invest into our youth and build this like no tomorrow, whatever it takes. Old Testament Israelites, you know what they did? Levites, go. <laughs> They would win wars. They would conquer like huge, oh my God, it's just, it's amazing. Demonic chaos would start forming when Levites would start releasing the glory of God. That's how cool this stuff is. And that's, that's where we're entering into right now. So literally, obedience, trust, stand in your gap, whatever God has put on your heart and whatever that looks like for you in a moment. And also um, pray for our generation. Our next generation, people that are here, be sensitive to Holy Spirit because He's moving in all of our lives. And sometimes, you know, I have an easier day. The next day I have a more tough day. But on, the, on a tougher day, I know you guys will get my back in prayer and in support because we're one family. I'm done. So let's, let's pray. Let's release that God's seeds will truly be with us. Be with us in this culture and in our hearts. Let's close our eyes. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for what you're doing with us individually and corporately. Thank you for your sweet, fresh fragrance in this place. My life is yielded to you and I know what you're doing through my life, it's, it's eternal. And I know what our millennials and Gen Z's and, and different generations that are here. I know what you're going to do through their life. It's going to be exactly what's on their house. The presence, the anointing, it's going to go way beyond their lives and themselves. I just ask for simplicity, God. That we walk in humility, simplicity, that we don't think too much of who we are because without you we're nothing but yielded to you we are able we are strong enough to overcome we are strong enough to pursue we are strong enough to love on each other to love on you Jesus you're so good 
you are what I live for. You are what this, our youth lives for and what this church lives for. And you are worth it. You are worthy. I just release, Jesus, your presence, your power and authority. I release, Papa, the full cleansing with your fire, God, that we're able to withstand and pour out, Papa, pour out the glory that you put on our lives and see your presence do what we could never be done by ourselves out of our own lives. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being with us, for leading us, for guiding us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I just release protection over every person. I release your presence. Holy Spirit, I just ask the ones that need some kindling, kindle their up on the inside that they burn and they never stop burning, that their fire is intensified in their bellies. They never get used to your presence. Your presence doesn't get mundane, that they are always refreshed, restored. They always, bring, they always burn fresh with your presence and anointing. In Jesus' name, amen.